I didn't have enough money to both have an apartment and an office, so I opted for an office about the size of this little room. Yeah. And I slept in that office on that couch and then started Live Person. It was day Live Person. It was called Cyberite Interactive. Okay. I kept media and went to interact Interactive, and that's, that's what the original company. What about Town, though? I've heard about this town. So town was the first idea I had for a product, which was building like a Facebook for companies. Okay. To have, there was bulletin boards where customers could talk to each other. There was a little piece of this product that had chat with us. Okay. Which was new, right? It didn't exist. Okay. So we had a bulletin board where you post things, and then we made a chat room. And we, Xerox, uh, ended up selling Xerox on the concept. They went live with a group of their customers which are, that have high-end printers. Okay. And uh, they spent a lot of money with Xerox at the time. And we went live, and it was very funny because customers started to say, I hate Xerox. Xerox sucks. Don't you they think it sucks? They were talking to each other. They were talking to each other. So all of a sudden, I remember <laughs> uh, the woman who ran that calls me. I was like, guys, shut down the damn bull divorce. And yeah. why? She goes, our customers are saying we suck. I said, it's better to have them say they suck here, and then you can deal with the problem. No, no, no. I don't want our, my boss, I don't want anyone to see that. Yeah. But they said, keep the chat room up, because we're giving tech support. Because the chat room was the consumers t uh, chatting with Xerox. The, tech support. Uh, the bulletin board was the consumers all chatting with each other, and that just creates a tempest right. of... We always thought they would help each other, like, I got a problem. Instead, <laughs> yeah. they would just use yeah. it as a bitching session. Yeah. But, the, 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 but the one chat room was like, talk to tech support, and it really worked. So we basically, uh, there's five of us at the time, at that time, we decided to, uh, to go for it. And it was very interesting because at that time we had, we had one customer that accounted for 70% of our revenues. Okay. And it was called Sensual Source. And it was a okay. guy who was selling erotic products to women, very focused on women. He was a big executive of Macy's. And he made this beautiful website and sold these products. And we were building his website and everything. And we, then we tested the chat on his website. Okay. And it really worked really well. What happened was, about a couple months later, he calls me up and says, I can't pay you anymore, I lost my funding. But he was 70% of our revenues. And I had a couple of, I had about two or three months of cash in the bank to cover us yeah. for our payroll. So I remember this was a Friday, I went home, came back on Monday, I talked to everyone um, and said, look, we, should, we need to make a choice now. We can't, we're either gonna build websites and become a consulting firm, yep. or there's this thing called chat for web. So you were doing both at that time, so you had to make a decision. And, and the chat for web was only Xerox and this guy's website. And that was making very little money? No money. It was okay. like, well, no, the Xerox one, we charged about 200 grand. So actually, okay. that, was, that was a big contract. Okay. And so it was a hard decision to it, which right. one to choose. And I said, but I don't think we can do both. And we're losing 70% of our revenue, and we have three months in cash. Yep. So, and we all kind of voted, and we said, let's go ahead and, and do the, try this chat thing. And web chat didn't exist, so we then created, I remember we designed a chat window. We pioneered, like the chat window you see today came from someone and myself, and we created this chat, we kept experimenting on size, and then we launched it. We launched it as a hosted service. Okay, So we, yep. we were always hosted. And then we went out uh, and sold a, a bunch of customers, and then uh, raised money um, in uh, January or early 99. And when you made the decision, you were at about five employees? Yeah, we were five. Okay. And no, almost- We cut our salaries in half, by the way. I was making, I think, $20,000, so I was then yeah. cut it to 10. My lead developer was making probably 30, cut to 15. Uh, I mean, it was, it, we just, because we needed, we, we, we knew we needed more than three months of cash. Yep. We need at least six months of cash. Were you technically like a, a SaaS product then, or was it a different kind of business model? We were SaaS. So Before was, SaaS was a thing. There's no SaaS. Yeah, so exactly. We, I mean, really, we were SaaS. I'll tell you, one of the reasons we did SaaS is that there was a kernel of the code that wasn't ours. Okay. That we, it was an off-the-shelf product that we bundled in, and we were using that. And one of the reasons we thought we can't sell this as an enterprise software is because part of the code is... You're using somebody else's code. And it was code. like a $5 yeah. code product. <laughs> now that's so and normal. We're bundling it right. Yeah, yeah. Back then, it, was, it wasn't like open source. Yeah. And so... We said we're going to have to host it, and we were hosting it over an ISDN line. So it was very funny. I mean, we we had a server in the office, a little Spark station, and that was our server. And uh, that's how we that's how we started as a as a cloud SaaS company. That's insane. And that was 1999.